Evet. Open textbook. So. Yes, it's an open textbook exercise, so um, it's certainly not a test. So I might just, um, before I go into the next lesson, so that's an example of one in my particular course uh, that I thought you might like to see. Uh, does anyone want to ask any questions on that before I just uh, move on to the next one? Maybe if you'd uh, just put your hand up. Uh. Um, I'm just wondering about the interactivity. You know, if, if the students are entering their data into it, does that get recorded somewhere or does it come back to them or how do they keep a, a record of what they've done in the sim? Ah, ah right. They don't enter any data in. Uh, all the data is already there, so essentially it's a snapshot for a particular day. Uh, what they do is um, there'll be links uh, that simulate uh, them, say, going to a website and looking at the current day's data. Okay, it doesn't change, it's just for that particular day. So students don't actually modify or influence the, uh, the simulation at all. It's uh, essentially a snapshot, the data's static. What students have to do is to interpret that data for that particular, for that particular um, period of time and come up with a recommendation. So and they've got to do that in the form of a report to me. Uh, now what happens is that in the next scenario, what was the best practice for that particular situation? That gets incorporated in the next scenario. So that's the history. So uh, does that make it clear, Deb? I was thinking more in, in terms of them being able to enter data in text boxes or the reflection. Does that, where does that enter? You know, if they're, if, they're going to if they're going to record reflection, does that get recorded somewhere or does it come back to them in some form? Oh, I see what you mean. No, that, that reflection is, um, that's like a mini report uh, that also goes to me. And it's just an opportunity for them to uh, reflect on how they've um, worked through the exercises, uh, you know, some of the decisions that they might have made, um, what misled them. Uh, so. It's not actually something that's input as they're going through the simulation. It's, uh, it's a, a, a short report that I ask for uh, after they've done all four. So does the software take that back to you directly or do they have to submit that as a, a separate thing? No, what happens is that this is launched from Stream. So, uh, sorry, Stream is the, uh, is the name that we've got uh, at Messi for Moodle. So it's launched from Moodle. Uh, and they work through it and then they submit their report uh, to me through Moodle. So uh, um, I've got a, uh, an assignment a box open. Uh, it closes at a certain hour or a certain time. Uh, as soon as it closes, the next scenario is, is activated and they can't, uh, they can't submit a report for the preceding one. Okay, thanks. Uh, Sue, uh, Susan. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Great. Um, I'm doing a scenario-based assignment at the moment with some role play as well. I was just wondering if this has any role play in it or is it strictly scenario? No, this one doesn't have any, any role playing in it uh, at all. It's just a, a scenario the students, uh, the students work through. Uh, I, can't, I do get them uh, to work through it in teams if they want, uh, teams of two. Uh, I don't have the teams any larger than that. Uh, so they can do it by themselves or, or they can team up with someone else if they want to, uh, want to do it together. Right, uh, Ian? Hi, thanks. Uh, I'm just interested at the moment our medical program is uh, swapping over to what would broadly be kind of scenario based and I was in an interesting meeting the other day where uh, one of the lecturers said well how do you know that this actually translates into better teaching and in the end sort of better you know better practice when they go out to the hospital so I'm just wondering about the kind of long-term measurements in order to um, see how this translates into work practice and what the real benefits of the students are I mean I think I know but are you aware of kind of evidence around about how students are more prepared when they go out, how they're more able to deal with kind of complex environments, stuff like that? 
Yes, there's a there's a lot of conflicting uh, evidence that I've read in, in the research uh, about um, this, and and you know it's problem based learning in, in medicine, of course, uh, where it has it has quite a defined um, meaning, and uh, you know also out in, in a wider sense, and it seems to be a very difficult thing to measure, um, like I guess like a lot of this uh, educa educational technology. Uh, Educational material is difficult to measure. Um, some of the evidence I've seen seems to show that uh, it certainly helps students be prepared to, uh, to solve problems and to think laterally. Uh, it doesn't necessarily um, give them any uh, better grasp of content. But I know in the medical area, it's not an area, area I work in, but I know it's, um, yeah, it's a rigorously or vigorously debated topic. And seems to have been there for a number of years. Yeah, it's an interesting one. That that would kind of be my perspective. I mean, I'd have to say that my common sense approach would be: you must be more prepared, even if your content knowledge isn't enhanced. That you there's something intuitive about the fact that you're reasoning in a different way and dealing with complex problems. That you're going to set up kind of a cognitive structure that you can then take with you into the workplace. That, it seems a shame to me that we don't have uh, sort of, you know, uh, incontrovertible evidence of those kind of real benefits. Yes, yes, no. Well, I might just move on to the next. Uh, we've got another. Yeah, I might just move on to the next one, uh, just to show you a different type of uh, type of scenario. So, uh, oh, excuse me, I've just got to bring it up. This is one that's used by our vet school. Um, again, it uses a, uh, a different type of assessment. Uh, quite, quite a gutsy assessment, I would say. Um, this is uh, the use of scenarios for what is termed a virtual vet hospital. And uh, it was used last year with final year uh, veterinary students. And uh, they used, the well, lecturer used SBL Interactive and uh, essentially what was almost a uh, simulation of a hospital where uh, it had a number of rooms, you could do a number of tests in those rooms, uh, and students uh, had to go through three cases in a three-hour exam. So uh, the pressure was on. This was uh, the final exam. Uh, it was 100%, so the paper rested just on this. And the idea was that they'd go through these three cases uh, in SBL Interactive in um, these, uh, these virtual hospitals and work through the questions and report a diagnosis and a treatment. So, uh, you know, it was, it was pretty pressured stuff. Uh, his argument is that uh, they should be able to do this as uh, practicing vets. Uh, they'll be under this sort of pressure. And um, so this is what was done. So I'll just show you some of the screens uh, that we use in the virtual vet hospital. So um, it's pretty rough. I mean, it doesn't look that pretty. Uh, it had a number of um, a number of various uh, rooms here. There was a sort of uh, laboratory. Click on that laboratory, and you'd find a whole lot of tests. Each of the tests with money, uh, a certain amount of money. They could also take a certain amount of time, and everything the students did um, was logged. So uh, when he came to assess the uh, examination, uh, the lecturer would go through those logs. So we had the surgery, had the pharmacy, had you know a whole lot of um, various uh, uh, various um, rooms and tests there. So students were thrown into into it. They were presented with a case. Uh, they may have to take the case to surgery. Uh, they might have to run some tests. They had to decide what tests to run. Uh, some of these tests had consequences. Uh, some of the surgical procedures had consequences. So, for example, students.